I like that day. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Trauma Plicity Talk Show with your host, Dr. Amanda Hellman. And we have trauma plus plicity, which is really simplicity. And when our brain hears simple, it's better than complex because it knows one step at a time, one step at a time we can heal. Mm -hmm. And so that's what the purpose of this show is bringing men and women, hopefully youth and children, talking about their journey and simple steps that they've used part of their trauma their story because sometimes trauma stories can be a lot there's different areas but bringing in a part of their story some practical tools they've used again things that you may find helpful or you can relate to and then encouraging you as you continue in your journey because the trauma healing journey is ongoing mm -hmm. and i'm really thankful because today and this is Wednesday at 7 p.m. on Eastern Standard Time that I have this. Um, but I have a guest, Stacey Collins, who I know, a fellow entrepreneur, kingdom entrepreneur, um, and a fellow woman who has such a heart for people. And she's going to be sharing uh, her, part of her journey. And Stacey, I'd love for you to share a little bit more about you. So whatever you'd like to share about yourself for the audience to hear. Well, thank you for having me here first. Um, it's an honor to come and share a piece of my story in life and, and to see how um, I've transitioned through. And even to, you know, even to look back as I was thinking of coming on uh, today, wow, I've lived through this, you know, like, wow, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm glad to have you. And the first question I always ask is, what is part of your trauma story that you'd like to share with the audience? Well, when I look back <laughs> over my 53 years of life, uh, there were so many seasons of trauma and I am picking and pulling and going, okay, God, which, which one, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and I was thinking this morning, uh, there were times in my life that I got so used to trauma being my story that like I, I needed to feel that ache in my heart constantly. Like it was my best friend, my identity. And I'd forgotten that, but this morning I was reminded of that, how there were so many things in my life that I could never catch um, a breath or a moment and as I look back, I'm like, wow, God, you brought me through so many things. And the thing that I wanted to highlight today was, as I was praying and thinking about this, um, there's many, there's been many layers of traumas and griefs, but the deepest ones for me and the ones that I haven't shared as much publicly, um, but I feel like it's time. <laughs> um, and so thank you for asking me to do this because it's still a part of my healing journey, yeah. just mm -hmm. sharing my story, you know? Um, so I grew up uh, in a family of, well, I started out as the baby of two kids for four and a half years, the only, <laughs> mm -hmm. only baby. And then along came my little sister and then along came seven more. <laughs> so yes. I ended up with a a large family of 10 <clears throat> children in the family and being the oldest girl. So you can know there's a lot of story in that. Um, many of my siblings felt like my own children because of the age difference. So um, I was looking back and I'm going to mention in 1999, a lot shifted for me. I was a mom of three kids at the time, now I have five, um, and they were little, they were very small. And I got the news that my 14 year old brother had died suddenly. Mm -hmm. And um, that, that wrecked me. That was, that was a 10 year journey of mm -hmm. healing. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't know this at the time, but everything that that's what they say. You might know this more even than me, but that everything that I'd never dealt with in, I was 30 at the time, um, accumulates together and all becomes one big ball of trauma. 
and you can't separate. And so um, there were moments at that time. I remember going and sitting up on a hill, the sun was shining and I could see the mountains in Calgary, Alberta, where we lived. And I remember I had gone to the Christian bookstore and bought some books and CDs and things to listen to. And there was that song that Michael W. Smith wrote, This Was Her Time. And this was, my brother passed away July 20th, 1999, and this was December, but nothing really hit me until December. And I had shut down. My husband had to carry all the weight of everything mm. with the kids, the little kids, you know, um, and I got pregnant in that time, <laughs> which was an interesting dynamic yeah. with my beautiful daughter, Charisma. Um, but I sat there in the car and I remember that feeling I could just choose to, to go. Like, I just felt that moment. I've never felt this any other time in my life. Mm -hmm. And I had a choice to choose to stay or to go mm -hmm. life or death. I don't even know, but I felt it in my brain. Mm -hmm. I can't describe it, but I knew that I chose life and it wasn't easy but I felt that moment. It was like, whoa. And I kept hearing that song. And then there was a song on that CD that was like, I will carry you. Mm. I don't know if you've heard it, Michael W. Smith. So yeah. that was a moment. And I hadn't even thought of that before I came to talk to you. So it kind of was like, like, I didn't even have that, you know, yeah. point down or anything. Um, yeah. But that was a pinnacle moment. Mm -hmm. And as my daughter was growing inside of me, um, I almost had her in March when she was due in July wow. and uh, she'll be 22 next month. Um, and I look at that and I think, wow, it was like, God knew that I needed this baby to help me choose life. Mm -hmm. And I didn't think it through, or, you know, I just made that choice. Um, and so fast forward through, I, I had now four children, they grew up, um, my family, you know, my kids are in Hollywood and did some, you know, incredible things there and still are, you know, building their lives and in their journey. Um, and I dealt with different things and raising teenage kids and, you know, um, I'd healed through <clears throat> so much, but it did take 10 years. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I, life was going on and I remember my 50th birthday, 2018, November 22nd, um, it was such an amazing, joyful day. I turned 50. <laughs> I was like celebration time. And it's really interesting because it's like an oxymoron, Amanda. It's, I was thinking this is going to be the best year of my life. Mm -hmm. And three weeks later, I get the news that my brother is gone mm. and it rocked everything because I'd built up I'd I'd come through I'd I'd walked through so much healing like the 10 years before that even after I got 10 years of mm. you know grieving and, stuff, and I came through and um I was like how can I how can I go through this again yeah and it was interesting as I look back and unravel you guys it's such a beautiful story of I could never, I could never see God not even not there, even though I was so angry. I I I look back and I think, wow, sometimes we don't even know how to pinpoint how we made it out of or oh. what we did. Or, you know, I was thinking about that when you asked me um to come on. How how, how do I describe all of this? Um, and so I went through that journey. Um and I remember getting on the plane to go from LA back to Calgary and I was on my own and guys, I sobbed like uncontrollably. Uh, yeah. they, they had to have the pilot help me get off the plane, um, walk me. I couldn't get out of the seat for 20 minutes. Like it was literally grief came on me so strong. I'd never experienced grief like, like this. Um, it's like, it took your whole, my whole body. Um, and also I'd been through before. So if there were any remnants or layers, I know God was like saying this needs to be faced and dealt with. So I walked through that time and it was, it was so neat how 
I remember at Christmas time, a few weeks after my brother passed away, uh, my mom got a text message conversation that he had uh, been sharing with a friend. And we found out like he was talking about God and how God had healed him, but he was, you know, embarrassed to tell our parents stuff because he had been denying God. So that was such a Christmas thing for us. I thought that's something to share for those of you who have, you know, been through this kind of um, loss. And now I'm, I'm coming to the the main one that um, they all are significant. Um, But my closest relationship uh, is my sister. Mm. And nine months after my, my brother passed away, shockingly my sister was 42 my brother was 52 um i don't like that's two and a half years ago from now and it's amazing that my younger brother dying suddenly all of them suddenly right um took 10 years but through processing through that there was strength in me. God had built muscles in me yeah. as I go through new losses. Mm-hmm. Does it make it easier? No. <laughs> um, I came across a song of her singing a few days ago and I was like, whoa, <laughs> you know, yeah. and I, and I found a letter I wrote to her a year before she passed away. So beautiful. And it was a gift to me. I found it like two nights ago and I'm like, Wow. Thank you, God, that you've brought me through. Mm-hmm. And up until probably three months ago, actually, I felt like I was in a grief fog. So basically, things would happen around me and I'd be doing a lot, but I'd forget or I I couldn't grasp anything more. And so that grief fog... Um, it felt debilitating, but it also felt safe. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I was many times I could picture me sitting by the water. I can just see it so clearly in in green grass and a tree, you know, shading the sun. And I was watching all my, you know, we're in a movement together, like an entrepreneur movement in Amanda. Mm -hmm. And I'd watch all my friends climbing up the mountains and, you know, busy Mm -hmm. over here. And I'd be sitting by the water going, wow, good for you but here I am Mm. and I'm going to stay here. Yeah. And so, you know, I, without going into the deep, deep of that journey, but just highlighting that's three siblings that I love and I know they live on, you know, that I know that I think that is a huge promise in my heart. Um, And that is a big help of my journey is, just knowing they they still live on. Yeah. That's beautiful, you know, Stacey, and thank you for sharing. And, and again, you know, I, uh, grief is, and loss is, is unfortunately a part of our lives here on earth. And it's very painful. And it seems like in this, you know, you lost three important people too, and you had different decades um, of grieving and having to go through that. And you also talked about your sister, who was a very close relationship Mm -hmm. and the strength that we don't realize that we get in that, but it doesn't take away the pain. You know, it, we may like, we're, we, you may have walked through it, but it's just like, it's, it's, um, it's still a lot. Yeah. And I, you know, just hearing that and hearing your story and thank you for sharing and sorry for your losses because it's never, ever easier, easy, easier, easier. I know. Um, it's never easier or easy. Um, but you know, for people listening that there's a lot of grief and I think sometimes for you, I'm when people share their grief stories, you have this great compassion because you have lived it and we all have different people pass away but yours is that you've had siblings pass away Mm -hmm. um and people close to you Mm -hmm. and we all have but you can relate to the to people who have been like one person after another or in that stage and i feel like that is hopefully some of the parts of your story that 
God's, you know, building you and equipping you to be able to walk with other people with that broken heart. Mm -hmm. And I feel like grief is a way we can all relate, but it's the hardest thing to relate to because it's harder to share our grief. Mm -hmm. And I think the other profound thing you talked about was when you were sitting by the water Mm -hmm. and different people were starting to do different things, but some of the biggest things we can do is sit by the water. Mm -hmm. Jesus sat a lot. (laughs) He -hmm. sat a lot and he gleaned from God. And I think we forget because like we want to go, but it's like just God's like was doing something in you, that internal uh, strength. And I think there's merit in that when we go, but there's such a huge thing about being that pillar inside, Mm -hmm. um, even when we're doing things, but like you were being and being is, so incredible because it's like you are than you do and I think you were God was showing you something so you weren't moved you said I'm sitting here this is what I need to do right now Mm -hmm. and sometimes we can get moved from other people or try to move into it but you sat and you allowed God to do what he was doing in you Mm -hmm. and that that's faithful and I was thinking when you shared that of like Anna and like Simeon, like sometimes I think, oh, sitting there and praying all day, like is Anna, right? The prophet is like, or I think it was Anna, hopefully, but she like waited her whole life after her husband died and she's in the church praying and interceding until Jesus came. And Anna, the, Anna. Huh? Anna? Anna? Yeah, Anna. Yeah, was it? yeah, Anna. Well, there's Hannah and there's Anna, but Anna was the one that was like praying. Oh. And then she was an older woman that before okay. Jesus was born, she was like praying and she was older and like she had lost her husband, but years later, uh-huh she was praying and that was what she was called to do. That was her purpose. And she loved doing other things. I'm sure she impacted people, but that was her heart and like Simeon and they were called to that. So I think we forget that in our hugest, like at any time sitting at the water Mm -hmm. and allowing God to flow in us is part of the journey. Mm -hmm. And I think you just are sharing that. So people who might be listening and we're like, Oh, I need to do, I have to do this. Like it's part of the journey to just sit and feel our grief at grief at times. And we don't, and I, and I thank you for sharing that because that stood out to me. It stood out to me that you were, he was filling you and he was saying, yeah, just sit with me and let me put my healing bomb through you. Mm, that's so beautiful you. to be even hear that back. And as I think about it, you know, there's this fear. I'm going to lose everything that I've mm. built and what about the anointing on my life? And what about the leadership that I carry? What about all this? And that's a real fear. What mm-hmm. if I lose who I am? Mm-hmm. And you feel like you lose who you are because you're you're kind of cocooned in this space. I call it a fog because it, it's, it's like you're protected. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> you have to go through the grief. And, and I, I've been saying, Amanda, like you have to grieve well. Like Mm -hmm. if you don't grieve well, it goes on and on forever. And after what I went through with my first brother, that 10 years, it took from my life. Mm -hmm. It actually robbed me. And I, I know I had a resolve in me after my brother and sister died nine months apart from each other. That was so much. And we lost eight family members in that time wow. before COVID. So it was a lot. Lots. This is aunts, uncles, my husband's yeah. mom, like, you know, not far <laughs> distant. These are people that were in my life. Um, you know, if I didn't face it, I knew it would go on and on and on. Yeah. But I didn't try to, okay, let's go deep. Like, mm-hmm. and, and I also chose not like, people were used to me praying for them in deep mm-hmm. ways. Cause I dealt with people with trauma. Like I would pray people with trauma and they would show up and they would come to comfort me, but I'd end up feeling like they needed me. And I, mm-hmm. I would have to say, I'm sorry. I, I, I can't go there right now. Yeah. And, and I was angry at God. Like, I was like, why? I kept asking why. Mm-hmm. And, and I remember God saying to me, I remember so clearly he said, Stacy, you have to stop asking why mm-hmm. because you won't understand. Yeah. But as I look back now, wow. Because remember I said, victory is the year 50. Yeah. I lost two siblings in that time. Well, guess what? God brought victory in so many different ways, even in the strength in me mm-hmm. for the first time to stand up and say, 
no more. Yeah. I won't enable anymore. Yeah. I won't turn my head anymore. Mm-hmm. I, I won't st- stand aside when someone needs help, but I don't want to offend mm-hmm. no more. And that was huge for me. That was, I could never have done that on my own. I was the, the nice person, the sweet person, the one everybody um, trusts, the one everybody wants to come to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I had to change and stand up and use strength that I didn't even know I had. Mm-hmm. That's powerful. And I think it, it, what you just shared, and those are some strategies, but you healed, you allowed your grief mm-hmm. process and sometimes we don't even realize that we might be going, 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 right? Try to like avoid it, or there's like, you know, different unhealthy or healthy coping skills, or um, like you said, or sometimes we're just trying to help other people and like you burn out, but you allowed the grief process. And sometimes people don't know how to even stop it. It's like a plug that keeps going. Like that was most of my life. I'm like, oh, I'm crying all the time. I don't know how to get rid of it, but I'm crying, you know, or I didn't, I know how to plug it in. And I think there comes a time like you, yeah, you're grieving and you learn how to do that. And you said you found your voice to say, yeah, like I need this time. I'm not able to help you. I need that support. And even having those healthy boundaries. I think you were saying like, I care about people, but just because we care, like even Jesus cared, but he went and he had to take a break away from the multitude because he needed it. He needed time with God. So I think you're modeling, he modeled to us what we need to, you know, we're not, um, cause it, it could be a burnout, not that he didn't love us, but he needed that time. Yeah. Um, and I think that was, uh, huge. Like you said, you changed, it changed you, it transformed you, but in a, in a good way, in ways that you could say, I need this time or I can give this. Yeah. Um, and I think that's powerful. Thank you. Yeah. Well and somebody um, asked me, somebody asked me like, uh, just after my brother died in 2018 in, in the January 2019 it was a guy who got enough drugs he was at the dream center and no one in my life had asked me this he said how did you not get on drugs and alcohol mm. and I had tears in my eyes like because I was like whoa mm. I never thought of that because my life was surrounded by you know people running to you know substances or lifestyle and or medication and yeah the only thing I could say to him was God. Yeah. It's powerful. But God, right? At the but end God. of the day. Yeah. Um, even though that may have been around us. Yeah. But God, you know, had kept you. That's powerful. And even people who are watching, and there may be people who did that because sometimes when we're in that pain. Yeah. We go to things. It could be food. It could be um, over exercising. It could be under exercising. You know, it could be addiction to people pleasing. There's yeah. so many things um, in that happen and you know so if you're watching it's not you know this is this is part of the journey but you may be realizing oh uh, you were in pain like you were grieving and so you know that we care about you like stacy too like and hopefully you can resonate with this that if you are on that journey and like oh my gosh that's what happened that there's still time Mm -hmm. and i think stacy too with the time because i feel like that's for the people on like we're never behind and i don't know if god's ever told you that i pray that he does Mm -hmm. i was sitting in my bed the one time because i could relate to that time thing like years ago and god wakes me up sometimes like when i'm right getting up that's when he speaks to me these big things and i was sitting there he's like you're not behind you know, because there's things in my life that haven't come to pass yet. And God's like, you're not behind, <laughs> you know, the society has this, like, you're behind, like you said, you're nervous, like, am I ever going to pass me by? And I feel like God, did, like sometimes in the process, because there's a quick and then there's a process and he knows with the process, there's wisdom mm-hmm. and he knows in the process, there's deep, go, deeper compassion. And, and even just recently, I was like, you know, just going through some different journeys, and I went up for work because I felt like God was like, I want to encourage you. And the word was like about me getting even deeper compassion. And I was like, okay, I, got okay. you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, okay. Like, and I was really tired that night. Right. So I went up and they're like, oh, just like Jesus on the cross and he was suffering. Right. Like wow. he just wants to get you going deeper compassion. And I was like, you know, but I, you know what I'm saying? But like, kind of like the time thing, you're like, okay. And like in my head, I was like struggling with the receiving of that because <laughs> like, I was like, Okay. And then I was like doing the job thing, but, but I'm just saying like, you know, sometimes Stacy, like when we're in it, we're in the process, but God mm-hmm. trusts you yeah. as like a, like a general mm-hmm. of like, 
healing, right? And the, the deeper our compassion, the deeper, like we could become like Jesus. And that's where the healing, the miracles and everything comes in. So because you've been through so much, like he's just deepening the well in you of that compassion. So I just wanted to speak that, you know, it was kind of yeah. like just- And I want, I want to clarify, oh. you know, when, when I say that, um, that, that doesn't make me in a better place. Um, so many people that I love deeply, mm -hmm. that's the story. Yeah. And I feel it's about knowing the love of God. Yeah. And so that's what I would encourage for you, yes. you know, listening to this, um, I would pray that for you, that you will know the love of God, yeah. because I believe it wasn't just, but for God, but it was that somehow I knew he loved me mm -hmm. and I know he loves you. And so, and I know he loves my close family people. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't understand even with all I've seen, I don't understand that, that yeah. pull and that, that trauma yeah. added to trauma yeah. um, because I see it. So it's, it's all around me within my, you know, my family. So I wanted to touch on that because yes. I never would say, Oh, I'm better than, mm -hmm. but it's the only way that I can describe that kept me. Mm -hmm. So I just pray or releasing right now, a blessing of God's love mm -hmm. that, you know, I even just released a song called let me love you from God. Mm -hmm. That was a song for me. Um, no matter what you do, no matter where you go, no matter who you be, mm -hmm. I love you. And that the song is like, let me hold you. Let me be with you. Mm -hmm. Let me love you here. And that's my heart. And so I didn't want that to be, mm -hmm. um, misunderstood because if you are struggling in that there's no judgment yeah and I believe God is there for you as much mm -hmm. as me and everyone else that's a compassion that you're talking about and I didn't want to just bypass that because mm -hmm. I know for me I couldn't I wouldn't have the strength with a family of addicts you know it's in me in my it's in my genealogy it's in my family to want to run to something. And so when I say that, it's like, wow, God, like help, help me more and help the others that we love and, and for you mm -hmm. too as well. Thank you for letting me share that part. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah. And the, I think that's, yeah, that clarification, but I, I think that's powerful is right. Cause the love of God, it, it, there's no separation. <laughs> he yeah. just loves us. So thank you, yeah. Stacey. And, and those of you watching that you receive that impartation that you are loved, that you are valuable. Yeah. And yeah, so Stacey, you know, those are some great like strategies, just even how you're processing that. And I know you encourage the audience. Was there one more word of encouragement that you have for the audience that might be watching? Oh. I feel like I'm hearing courage. <laughs> Um, yeah. I believe courage is, is something birthed within us mm -hmm. that we have already there that we're created for. And a few weeks ago, I was looking it up and I was hearing courage is I can mm. just, I can. And I was thinking about, I think I can, I think I can, you know? And so I want to encourage you in courage mm. and it doesn't have to be big. This is what I, this, this is so profound for me. How, one of the biggest things for me was getting out of bed mm. and getting tea. Yeah. And that took courage. And it seems so small, but it actually was so huge because I wanted to stay in bed. Yeah. I didn't want to go on with life. I wanted to pretend it wasn't happening. And if that's you, I just want to encourage you, encourage, mm -hmm. you know, I said, be right where you're at, you know, like yeah. just be but courage to try one little tiny, if it's even a centimeter, right? 
to embrace life so that you can get your life back so that you can stand up and share your story of where you've come from and into and we've never arrived like we were talking earlier the pain doesn't disappear yeah. it comes in different seasons yeah. but just like when I found my sister's song the other night or I found a letter I wrote her a year before I'm like I'm crying yeah. because we love these people yeah. and whether it's to death whether it's to divorce whether it's somebody turned and became abusive narcissistic yeah. you know there's so many things that all of us deal with and your trauma is not too small that's right if it hurts it's trauma it's it's mm -hmm. it's affecting you so I want to encourage you, what does courage look like for you? What does that feel like? And the verse that helps me all the time, that's so simple. I believe it's Psalm 118.1, but it says, I love you, God. Mm. You make me strong. Mm. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that, Stacey about the courage and even just getting out of bed because sometimes people don't realize that when we're feeling such a heartbreak or feeling such sadness mm -hmm. that it's hard to get up you know and like you said just to get that tea just to get up yeah. where people say just get up and it's like well what am i getting up for and, and like what's going on and um like you said that strength of the love of God in you. That's like, I'm going to help you get up, right? And I'm going to be your hope and your strength in the time where it's hard for you to even get up. Yeah, that's beautiful. And thank you for encouraging the audience. So audience, um, thank you, Stacy. If there's any questions you have for Stacy, you can put in the chat and comment or um, certainly I will get them to Stacy. And just know audience that you're loved, you're valued and mattered, no matter what it, every time, no matter what you do, do God loves you. And um, thank you again, Stacey, for being on here and appreciate you sharing your story. So thank you. Care. Yeah, bye everybody. You. Bye everybody.